So how do we measure these, um, or how do we determine this activity of these metals? Well, we have to measure the potential versus some reference electrode. So if we measure each metal versus the, the reference electrode there, uh, and work out the potential there, and then we can make a list, and that's how we develop a galvanic series. Uh, lots of factors will influence the potential development. Obviously, the electrolyte that we have there, and the usual one we use for galvanic corrosion is seawater. Usually, moving seawater, aerated seawater, it is important. So, uh, have an electrolyte, a reference electrode there, connect up. Uh, each metal in turn and measure the voltage and produce, hopefully, a, a series. So this has been done by lots of people and if you Google these things, as we usually do these days, the most common galvanic series that you find is this one here. Um, originally appeared back in the 1970s. I think it was work done by the Inco Nickel Company, so we'll refer to this as the, the Inco chart. There are other ones as well, but this is certainly the, the best known one. And what they've got here is the potential along the top there versus the saturated calomel electrode and each of the metals in start. Uh, now, I've drawn this up, what I consider the correct way. Uh, negative uh, is down or to the left, positive is up and to the right. So uh, most of them are around the other way with magnesium up the top. But strictly speaking, magnesium, most ne negative one there. Then there's zinc, also a very active metal, aluminium, cadmium, iron, etc., moving up through the copper alloys, nickel alloys, stainless steels, and up to the very noble metals there. So uh, this is the sort of uh, typical galvanic series that people would use. Although for that simple work that I mentioned earlier on, usually they'll just take the, the alloy itself. They won't actually give a potential. So let's have a look at how they do that. And here we go, seeing whether or not we can, um, uh, whether our results relate to the INCO series and uh, see if we can explain um, if anything doesn't quite work that way. So what I have here is, is a series of uh, different electrodes. We have here a voltmeter. And unfortunately, when it travels over, it's got some um, glitch in it, and it's giving me an extra volt for one of the readings. So what exactly happened there? I'm sure P.F. Thompson and Davey didn't suffer these things. But at any rate, well, let's see how we go. So we need to make sure that you can get a reading on that. And we'll switch it on. Now, I'll, I've got the electrode set up so that um, a positive reading on that actually should be negative. I'll show you the electrodes later on, but we won't disturb them. I don't want to tempt fate too much. We will use this complex stirrer just to make sure everything's air, thoroughly aerated. Very expensive stirrer. Uh, when, when I've been trying this, there's lots of factors that have seemed to affect the result, and. Um, the amount of salt in there, the amount of aeration and things like that all, all come into it. Interestingly, for some reason, the cleanliness of the electrode doesn't make much difference. Why that is, I, I haven't got a clue. There's obviously some research project. So we've got the different electrodes there. We've got a, a saturated calomel electrode there and they're connected up. Very simple. We, we actually do something similar to this in, in our um, basic corrosion course. So what we'll do is see what sort of results we can get, and um, here, here we go. So the first metal we look at is titanium, and this is the one that's giving me that problem. So uh, if you can see the, the reading there, it says minus 1035. Well, that minus 1 shouldn't be there. It should be a reading of just um, 0.035. So believe me, that's uh, what the, the reading should be. So we'll... Have a go here, and uh, it should be uh, plus. I'll just go to, to, to two decimal places. It's not worth um, worrying. So plus about 0.3 for titanium. Next metal we have is stainless steel. It's actually a 304 stainless steel there. Oops, and we're getting a reading of about. 0.002 there. 
And as I say, it's connected up, so that should be a negative reading. So 0 0.002, in that case, we'll have to do two decimal places. So that should be minus 0 0.002. Oops, it's not a minus. Oh, that underscore should be a minus. The next one is lead, and that's giving a reading all over the place. Let's see if we can make a better connection there. Of around about 0.4243, say. And lead's an interesting one. It seems to um, be all over the place. Oh, where's it? Point four two. Next one is copper, 0.23. Again, a minus figure there. Sorry about this. Very touchy mouse. 0.23. Tin. 0.39 brass 0.21 I probably should have had a whiteboard or something for this Aluminium, 0.63. So at least we can see that there is certainly a, a big difference between the different metals. Zinc, about 0.91. And finally, magnesium. And minus 